What's up guys, it's your boy Ethan, hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the video and pink sweatshirt, rocking that today, cause that is plus EV, we need some help. Um, so recently I looked at my numbers for January and February cash game results and I'm really not happy with it. It's been pretty lackluster. I'll put them up on the screen right here. It's really not anything impressive and I'm just breaking even basically. Granted, I will say I did punt off $1,400 at 2.5 um, in the month of January. So it could be plus $1,400 if I didn't do that. So January could have been like a normal month, but um, with all things considered, my results and profits so far playing cash right now hasn't been great. So in a little bit of a rut, kind of frustrated with the monotony of just playing 1-3 and grinding out 1-3. Uh, today I might be doing something a little bit different. There's a 7 o'clock tournament right now, uh, so it's a Thursday, no it's a Wednesday. So the 7 p.m. tournament, it's about like 5 o'clock right now or 5.30, so we're probably going to be playing 1-3, seeing how that session goes, and if it's boring or whatever, probably just going to hop into the tournament and see what that goes. It's $140 buy-in, and the structure's pretty good, price is really friendly, so I might just hop into that midway through the session. Um, but we're going to play it by ear. First off, going to hop into the 1-3. If things go well, we're gonna play, keep playing 1-3. If not, we're gonna mix things up and play a tournament because, well, I stink at tournaments, but they're fun at least. So, um, besides that, gonna hop up to the room and see how it goes. We've got a lot of hands to go over from this session, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. First hand, we have Ace Queen of Diamonds in early position. I opened up the action to $15, and two of the most active players on this table decide to make the call, so we're off to a flop. The flop comes Jack, Five, Deuce, two hearts out there, and the small blind actually leads out for $15. She tells everyone at the table before that she's very new to the game so um, when the big blind calls here with two overs and two backdoor straight draws I go ahead and just make the call for just $15. Uh, not really going to be good here or winning this a lot of the time but we're going to call the $15 and see what develops in position. The turn comes the deuce of clubs brings in the club draw as well and once again the small blind fires a bet of $20. The big blind folds and here I just can't fold for $20 just yet. We have two over cards and that's really it. But for 20 bucks, what are we going to do? We toss in the chips and see a river. River comes the ace of clubs. Awesome card for us. Exactly what we we're looking for. Even though the backdoor flush draw does come, top pair is certainly going to be good here a lot of the time. So when she checks, it looks like she has a jack x holding. So how much value can we get from one pair of jacks? I go for a larger sizing of $80. She's a fairly new player and I think that she can be calling with Jack X holdings a lot of the time. So she thinks about it and ends up making the call. She flips over Jack six of diamonds and we take it down with our pair of aces here. Hey, after that, we pick up pocket kings in the small blind and I'm on a very limp happy table as there are three limpers to a player to the button. Player to my right, Jason here, huge shout out to you for watching the channel. He raises to $20 and here obviously going to be three betting in this spot but interesting dynamics because one of those early position limpers is actually limping literally every single hand and playing every single hand so we want that player involved so I go for a smaller sizing I don't want this specific player that will be calling literally every with every single hand that she could have um, so I go ahead and three bet to $55 hoping that the limper will make the call or the specific target to make the call this player does make the call of $55 and the button who's a solid reg here also makes the call as well. So off to a flop three ways out of position. Flop comes ace, ace, four, two diamonds out there. So not the worst flop in the world, I don't think. Definitely feels better than just having one ace on this flop. So with two aces, less likely someone has an ace. So we're going to see bet this really small, $65, trying to get smaller pocket pairs to make the call. Only this middle position player makes the call and she only has about $50, $70 behind. So not too successful. Significant. We're gonna go all in on the turn here and see what happens turn comes the five of hearts And obviously I'm just going to be sticking it all in so I put it all in she thinks about it and makes the call off to a river. River comes a four, which is not a great card, but we show our pocket kings. If we're beat by fours full, then so be it. But she mucks and we take this one down. So it's 7.15 p.m. right now, so the tournament is just starting. Turns out the only tournament available that's running today is a satellite to the 500k guaranteed tournament this weekend. It's $120 buy-in, and the buy-in for the 500k is $600, so a uh, one to six chance to win it. That's the only one that's running, and the line right now is massive. We're actually on a pretty good table, so might just sit that one out and grind out cash today. That's probably what's going on, because I don't really want to play a satellite. 
So anyways, hopefully we run it up. Uh, we're up a little bit right now, so we'll see what happens. Following hand, we get ourselves in a pretty tricky situation. Uh, there are four limpers to the button who raises it up to $25. This is the same player, Jason, from last hand. I go ahead and three bet here, looking down at ace 10 off suit in the small blind. I go with a smaller sizing once again of $60. Last time I three bet small in the small blind with a monster hand, and this time we're gonna do it with a pretty light hand. Um, we get one player to make the call who limped the same player from last time. She's involved once again, and the button also makes the call. So we found ourselves in a pretty interesting spot here with ace 10 offsuit from the small blind in a three bet pot. We get to a flop three ways, which comes king, queen, eight, two spades out there, and I'm first to act. I want to try and win this pot. It's not recommended to try and see bet with air multi-way, especially on this flop where you completely brick out. And although it can definitely smash my range, it's a three bet pot. So it can definitely hit a lot of other players ranges as well. But I go ahead and bet $75. The middle position player limper makes the call, which is not great because she has $2 behind. The button makes the fold, so we're going to a turn heads up. I don't know what to do here, but the turn comes the nine of spades, so holding the 10 of spades is pretty decent, I guess. We're drawing to a 10 high flush, also with a gutter ball as well. Um, so I try to maximize all the fold equity that I can get, and I stick it all in for $2 effective. She obviously makes the call, and we're off to a river. River is a queen. I show my ace high knowing we're just totally not good here. And she has queen 10 of diamonds. So she had a good hand there and we just double her up. Next hand, we have pocket jacks in the hijack. Under the gun plus one player who also watches the channel. Huge shout out to you, Joe. Opens up the action to $15. Here, uh, it folds all the way back to me and definitely can three bet this spot. But against an under the gun plus one open against a competent player, he's got to have a tighter range than most one three players. So I just go ahead and flat balance my range as well get some strong hands in there. I don't really flat too much with strong hands. So I make the call and the big blind who has such a wide range makes the call as well. Off to a flop three ways. Flop comes nine deuce three rainbow. Great flop as we flop an over pair. Joe C bets $30. Um, 30 into 45. It's definitely a good enough sizing for me to not want to raise just yet. Also, we're in position. So it's a good enough sizing. I go ahead and just make the call. The big blind folds. So we're off heads up to a turn. Turn comes the four of spades. It brings in a backdoor flush draw. And he continues firing for a second time here for $60. Here as played, it's a pretty easy call. I don't think that he's going to be be raising with too many hands that connect with this board from early position. So I just call the $60 and we're off to a river. River comes a seven. Board is super connected now, but now he decides to just check. Once he checks, I feel like I'm good here a lot of the time, but how can I get value or really slim value from a 9x hand or pocket 10s? That's really the only two hands that I think I can beat right now. So he only has about $140 behind, and I just got to go for some sort of slim value bet. I think also queens and kings could be paw controlling as well sometimes, but since we were so short, he probably could just be jamming that as well since he's so short stack. Playing 1-3, it's really always about trying to find spots to get thin value from, so I bet a really small amount of just $60. Like I said, he's so short with $140 behind. Um, $60 could make sense here, and he could call light sometimes, but he thinks about it and ends up folding. Later, he told me that he had ace-kings. Next hand, we have jack-10 of diamonds under the gun, and I opened it up to $15. Four calls all around, so no respect for my under the gun raise and open here. So off to a flop five ways. Flop comes king nine seven rainbow with one diamond out there, and it's a really good flop for us as we flop an open ender. It's a really great flop for us as we flop double gutted along with a backdoor diamond draw. So here I'm going to be C betting into the field. I don't love it since we're playing so multi-way and I don't want to get raised too often here, but playing one three raises don't really happen too often. So I go ahead and C bet $40 into the field. We get two callers, the player to my left and the button. Off to a turn. Turn comes the magical queen of clubs, bringing in the full rainbow, sitting with the nuts right now and really not afraid of anything. Let's go for value. I throw out a bet of $100. The player to my left makes the call. He's the only caller and we have actually similar size stacks. So um, after playing with him for an hour or two, I just know that he's pretty call happy. So I think I can just jam my stack on a blank river. So let's go to a river, hoping for a blank. River comes a 10. 
just the absolute worst card not a blank at all and i'm just thinking what can i really get value from i can get value from hands like two pair that's about it i don't really know what else could make a call for a bet here but i think about it i think about just checking it sometimes to induce him to bluff at it um, but like I said, one three, really all about value. So I throw out a sizing of $250. Since he has about $450 behind right now, um, I just thought that 250 would be decent enough of a bet to make the call, maybe look like a bluff, not really sure, but he thinks about it. It ends up folding. Um, later told me that he had a pair and a straight draw and he didn't get there. So it seems like maybe in that specific spot, he could have bluffed at it if I checked to him, but that is what happened. And after that, we pick up Queen 10 of Diamonds in the hijack, sitting pretty deep right now with 900 in front. The player to my right opens up the action to $15. I am not going to be folding here, so I make the call and three others players and three other players call behind as well. So let's go to a flop, which comes Queen 10 9 Rainbow. Super connected board, and we flop top two. Action checks to me, and I'm going to be betting on the larger side on such a coordinated board. So I go with a sizing of $60 to charge all Jack X hands that are going to be flopping open ended here. The player to my left actually raises us to $100. Like I said, he's a fairly new player, so obviously this $100 raise will not stand. It goes up to a min raise to $120. Folds all the way back to me, and we have such a decision to make here. Min raises are so strong, and there's really not a whole lot of hands that I am going to be beating here who does min raise. A lot of flop straights, two pair combos, not a whole lot. I don't even think 10 9 bottom two would be raising here. So, really, the only hand that I beat in this spot is just queen nine, because he could also be doing this with a set of nines as well. So here for $60 more, I cannot be folding at all. So I make the call and trying to be more cautious on these turns and rivers. Turn comes the deuce, brings in a full rainbow. So no flush draws available. I check, he down bets to $100. And I don't love this spot at all. Not really feeling too comfortable with my hand, even though we are super strong. He only has about $200 behind this, so my mentality is that if I do somehow hit my four out on the river there, I'll make $200 extra. Um, probably could be folding this, but top two, it just seems too exploitative to fold just yet, even though I don't feel comfortable with this hand. I make the call of $100, and we're off to a river hoping to improve. River is a three, just the most brick runout you could ever ask for. I check, please, please, player, don't jam into me. He thinks, grabs two stacks of reds, and pushes it all in, saying all in. It's a total of $215, and I go well into the tank, do some math in my head, and immediately I just know that I have a really amazing price to call, better than 3 to 1. So really the only hands are pocket 9s for bottom sets, or flop bottom set, or a flop straight makes the most sense. This specific player's range is also wide enough to play jack 8, so it's not always king jack. Jack 8 is well in his range as well, so it adds more combinations of straights that he could absolutely have. After tanking and trying to find a reason to call, I've learned my lesson from that last video where I didn't call with two pair. I decide to fold and uh, lay it down there. Immediately, he tells me that it was a good fold and says that he had jack eight. So he never showed his hand, but I believe him there. We make the fold, unfortunately, but it was a good lay down for us. We are slowly learning from our mistakes. You gotta lose a lot of money first before learning the mistakes, but uh, at least I made the fold this time. For the next two hours in this session, not a whole lot goes on. Uh, I played a bunch of decent hands. We had picked up a bunch of decent hands, but just been losing. Every single hand we played, we had pocket jacks, pocket sevens, pocket nines, king queen suited, all those hands um, not going going well for us so we just trying to trip down for the next two hours which is really annoying until this next spot in this next spot we have a king jack offsuit in early position i have 500 dollars in front of me so we've tripped down significantly and the player to my right who has been running really really hot opens it up to 15 dollars this player to my right is actually the player to my left from the previous hands um, this same guy that we've been battling with back and forth. So he opens to $15. I switch seats and uh, I make the call and two other players call as well. Off to a flop which comes 9-9-10 rainbow. The preflop raiser early position player checks and on such a static board I definitely can take a stab at this. With two over cards and a gutter ball um, I go ahead and just fire a bet of $30 hoping to generate some folds here. Only the preflop raiser calls though, which is really surprising. So the other two players fold and the preflop raiser calls. So not really sure what the check call is there, but we're off to a river, which comes the queen of diamonds. 
brings in a backdoor flush draw and obviously improves us to the nut straight. Hitting our gut shot is always a good time. He checks to me and here I fire really small. I'm still not sure what hand he could be holding here when he check calls the flop. So I go ahead and just bet for value, obviously just a smaller sizing of $55. He thinks and makes the call. The river comes the four of clubs. It's a total blank. And once again, he checks to us. Given this line that he's checked called the flop and turn and now checks the river once again, I still don't know what kind of hand he could be holding, but I definitely can bet big here on this river to represent a bunch of missed straight draws or whatever it may be. So I go ahead and bet $135. He thinks about it and says that he has to call. And which he does, he calls with ace queen and uh, we take it down there. So betting $135 was a little bit smaller than I wanted to. I actually ended up misclicking. I wanted to go for a sizing of 165. We missed $30 of value, so be it, but uh, we win that one with hitting our gut shot. Next hand, we have king nine of clubs in the big blind and there's a straddled pot. In the big blind, there are four limpers to me, and I look down at a pretty decent holding, I think. Definitely a holding that we can squeeze with. So I go with the sizing of $45. The player to my left who straddled the other gun player makes the call. Bandit, huge shout out to you for watching the channel. And also the player that who's been playing literally every single hand. She's back and makes the call as well, sitting with a pretty big stack. Off to a flop out of position here. Flop comes king at nine, seven, two spades. So always got to love squeezing with marginal hands and absolutely crushing the flop. I go ahead and bet $100 into this pot here. There's a ton of draws out there, either straight draws or flush draws. So let's try to charge them. And no one's really expecting us to have a top two pair here. So I bet $100. The only gun player tanks and makes the call for about $70 behind. Middle position player who limped um, folds. So off to a turn. Turn comes the seven of hearts. And when that seven comes, the middle position player, the player that we were trying to play with, yells and is all mad about this situation. Clearly, she had a seven and folded it. So now feeling pretty comfortable. I have to put Bandit all in here. So that's what I do. Put them all in for about $70 left. And he doesn't think too long before making the call. So we're off to a river. River is the king of spades. The draws get there. River is the king of spades as the spade draw gets there, but obviously I have kings full of nines. That would have been a really interesting river if this middle position player, Limper, who also called, uh, made it to that river there. That would have been a really huge pop, but we take this one down. Next hand, under the gun player opens it up to $20. There are three callers to me, and I look down at three, four of clubs. There's $80 in the middle. We have to put in $17 more. Suited connector, I don't love it, but we're going to go with it, I guess. We toss in $17, and we're off to a flop. The flop comes ace, 10, 5, rainbow with one club out there. So flopping a gutter ball and also a backdoor flush draw. Uh, action checks to me. I'm checking, obviously, in the big blind. And weird enough, action checks all the way around. Off to a turn. Turn comes the deuce of hearts, that free turn card. Thank the Lord. We turn the nuts. It also brings in a backdoor heart draw and the small blind actually leads out in this spot for $32. Here sitting with a nut straight, I go ahead and raise to $95. It folds all the way back around to him and he thinks makes the call with about 50 to $60 behind. We're playing against a lot of short opponents here. To the river we go, the river is a jack. So not really a great card as king queen gets there, but I don't think king queen will really be taking this line of leading out turn and also calling a raise. So he checks, got to go for it all. I put them all in and he makes the call for about $60 effective. He calls with ace eight of diamonds. So we take it down with the wheel. Following that hand, we look down at ace king off suit in the cutoff playing about 1600 in our stack so we've been running it up pretty well here on the gun player opens it up to 15 dollars and he's also pretty deep stacked as well sitting with about a thousand in front i go ahead and make a standard three bets three exit it to 45 dollars um, the player that i've mentioned before in this video who is playing all of her hands makes the call in the small blind and the only gun player also calls my three bet. So off to a flop in a three bet pot. Flop comes ace, six, three, two diamonds out there. The small blind player checks and this only gun player who opened pre-flop uh, donk leads into us for $35. Actions onto me here facing this really small bet here. Flopping top, top. We're pretty comfortable with raising this spot. Also we're really deep. So we'd like to get as much money in the middle as possible. So I go ahead and raise things up to $115. The small blind is in this position playing really short stacked. She jams her entire stack in for $78 total. 
the unknown player now tanks and ends up making the call for the whole 115. So we've built a main pot and we're trying to build a side pot on the turn here. So let's see what happens. Turn comes the king of hearts, brings in a backdoor heart draw, and he checks to us now with top two pair and we're playing really, really deep. How can we get all the money in the middle somehow? Hands that we're probably targeting, ace, jack, ace, queen, something like that. Um, sitting with top two, um, when he checks to us, he has about $800 behind. So the way that I can get all the money in the middle here is just by betting a little bit bigger on the turn. So I go ahead with a sizing of $325. He thinks and ends up folding, which is unfortunate. We're off to a river. I take down the small side pot that we developed and off to the river, which comes the seven of diamonds. Diamond draw gets there. No fun because the small blind shows king nine of diamonds. Always hitting her out with the flush. We are not too happy about this one. The last hand that we're going to go over here, I'm on the button. We're playing six-handed, and we look down at queen 10 of spades. There are four whole limpers to me. We're playing late night, and we're playing short-handed with four limpers. I'm going to go to a larger sizing. I raised the $45, and we generated zero folds because four players make the call. So we're off to a flop, which comes queen 10, deuce, two diamonds. So once again, flopping top two, it's crazy. Action checks to me and really just trying to charge open at a straight draw, some diamond draws maybe. Um, also get some value from queen X. So I bet $90 and only one player makes the call. The same player that is playing every single hand this session. She's in it and we're in position. We flop top two, amazing sign as well. Heads up to a turn, which comes the Jack of Clubs. Once again, bringing in the backdoor flush draw. She only has about $150 in her stack. She thinks about it for some reason and ends up checking. Here, I'm gonna go all in here in this spot. Uh, it's a more connected board for sure, but sitting with two pair is definitely ahead of a lot of the hands that she's drawing with because she seems to be drawing to a lot of flushes or straights here. So we put her all in and she thinks and makes the call off to a river. River comes the four of spades. We expect her to be good here a lot of the time because she's really sticky with her drawing hands. I go ahead and show my hand expecting to be good. She waits about five, six seconds before showing us the good old queen jack off suits. We are not happy about this one. Uh, we've doubled her up once, then doubled her up again in two pretty big pots. We just can't take her down. Eight and a half hours later and 2.30 in the morning, we are finished with our 1-3 session. Did not expect today to go this long and this far, but we put in a hard day's worth of work. A uh, full eight hour grind today, and uh, it's never a horrible, I'm gonna leave the results here. I'm just not going to be saying how I was in for and how much I was out for, but those are the results, and I'm not gonna complain about them, but for sure, man, I mean, getting sucked out twice by the same player who was just running like a god running like a gook, like the hands that I didn't show, she was literally like doubling up with seven deuce, uh, flopping trip deuces and then turning a rivering a seven. Um, it was a jack four offsuit where she flopped a pair of fours, bottom pair, went runner, runner, jack, like doubled up that way. Like it was absolutely incredible, the heater that that was on. and. I, I, I mean, it was just a little tilting, but I mean, I'm pretty happy with myself that at the end of the day, I didn't actually tilt off and I still just stuck around and played relatively well for the most part. So happy with that. I think I played fairly decent, which is actually surprising after playing eight long hours and experiencing really a really swingy session. Uh, ran pretty hot first two hours and then ran cold then ran it back hot, and then ran cold, and now we're out with a profit of $900. Um, I think it was $900 exactly, which is pretty crazy. So there's that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you follow me on Instagram, or if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do that because I posted a bunch of updates from this session, um, all the ups and the downs and all that fun stuff. But anyways, I'm signing off now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.